Hey, this is Ava Unit 4A for CollectionDX.com. This is my second, count them, second video review for CDX. Right off the bat, I want to say thank you very much to everybody for providing all the feedback that I asked for. I really appreciate it. That's probably the most feedback I've gotten in four years. Please continue to leave that kind of feedback. I really, really need it because I'm very, very un... Um, you yeah, know, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm very uh, not so confident, let's put it that way. Okay, here we go. This is the Samurai Star Lightning Megazord. The term lightning is a piece of crap that was made up by Bandai America as part of their marketing ploy. So I'm not even going to bother using that. And this particular mode is called the Samurai Star Chopper. Uh, the big highlight here is that the propeller blade can spin all by itself. Now, one of the things that I've encountered uh, is that the there's a, actually a wind-up gear system inside of here. You spin it up, and you spin it up, and you wait till it locks up there, and then you press down on the top button here. Now, a couple of things might happen. The unfortunately has random problems with it, so I don't know exactly what it's going to do here. Okay, that's one of them right there. You hear that clicking? And it locked up by itself. That's one problem. For whatever reason, the locking, me the, the mechanism, the wind-up mechanism, it doesn't want to completely disengage. Uh, well now it does. So I'm gonna see if I can try and do this again. Okay, here's another one right here. It was refusing to click. It was refusing to re-engage when I twisted it backwards. That's also a common problem that happens randomly. Now it's behaving correctly because I can... Okay, it's locked up. Let's see if I can get this to spin right. Nope. Nope, it did not. Okay, let's see here. I want to do it at least once for you guys. There we go. There. Did exactly what it was supposed to. Wonderful. Uh, the other highlight is uh, the landing gear here can open and close easily enough. Well, no, I shouldn't say easily enough. There's a very tiny tab uh, on the edge there uh, that's not very flexible. When you get it in there, uh, your fingers are going to be hurting uh, if you get stuck in there. I, I don't like these landing gear. They, the joint there is a little, little too hard to turn. The other thing I want to highlight here, other things in vehicle mode I want to highlight is these landing gear. The joint here is really tight, uh, so and the tab is is really tiny, very inconveniently placed, and so you you have a tendency to crack fingernails and things like that, which I've actually done. It's actually a rather painful experience. Uh, and the other highlight is that these propeller blades can both spin. They don't kind of rotate or anything like that. You can actually blow on these things. Okay, enough of that. And they will actually, you know, turn. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you how to transform this guy. Very easy to change this guy. Um, the, uh, this, I'm, you're going to be hearing me this whole time. The rotate, the, the rotor motor function in there is very, very irritating thing. Hey, he's looking backwards. Arms, or the legs space naturally apart. Uh, oh, there it is. See, it just locked up. And it just locked up again, but fortunately I don't need to worry about that right now. And that's all there is to the transformation. Okay, I'm going to be showing you how to pose this guy. This guy cannot pose very easily. You can see immediately there's a problem when you twist this to the first 45 degrees. Uh, it pushes right up against the armor. In the series, uh, the guy walking around in the stunt suit, uh, the, the, the chest armor is always like this. Oh yeah, by the way, the head also turns in the series, obviously, but in this case these bars get in the way, so you can't do that. To eliminate all our problems, and I'll be covering most of the toy this way, I'm just going to take off the chest armor and make them all naked like this. This actually gets thrown around like a giant uh, shuriken, is the proper term. It's a throwing star by any other terms. So Samurai Star Megazord will throw this around all over the place like a boomerang or something. Okay, now you can get into the posability. The arms twist every 45 degrees, yada, yada, yada. Um, you can pull the arms out. If you want to be really creepy, you can do that as well. The head can turn, but only because it's, you can see it's only half a head. So when you turn it around, you get that kind of weird thing. The legs are posable to a certain degree, mostly because of transformation. Pretty much only because of transformation, that's as far as they go that way, but, I mean, would you really want to put it to that pose? It doesn't hold in that position. Other thing I kind of pointed out earlier is that the ankles are very accommodating. They, they actually uh, lock into position, so he has a nice, nice flat stance. 
Another thing, uh, this guy actually does have knee joints uh, that bends up to you know the 45 degrees there, but uh, you, you can see that the joint here uh, is very off center from where that is, and you can't really pose this guy um, standing up like that. I mean, he only he only just sits like that. He's very very prone to falling over. And by the way, you cannot pose it. Uh, from what I can tell, you can't really pose it with the chest armor on there, so that's a bit of a problem. Okay, I'm going to be showing you how the weapons work on this thing. Uh, as I pointed out earlier, this gets thrown around like a giant boomerang. However, the um, the hands on the Megazord cannot hang on to uh, these things. Uh, it'd be nice if they did, but unfortunately it doesn't, so I'm just going to throw that aside. Um, the Deluxe Samurai Star Lightning Megazord set does not come with any Power Sphere weapons of its own. It comes instead. Uh, actually, it just comes with what you see here. Uh, so you have you have to provide it with other weapons. Now in the series, it uh, it only deploys Power Spheres numbers 10 and 12, which are the B Spinner and the Spider. I think somebody calls it the Catch Spider. It wasn't named in the series, so there's no way to know what to call it. Uh, those belong exclusively to the Samurai Star Megazord, but uh, this toy, uh, in keeping with other, uh, the other uh, Ninja Storm toys, uh, can accommodate other ones. Uh, I don't have Power Sphere number 2 Ram Hammer or Power Sphere number 3 Turtle Mace. I can only guess. Uh, it might be able to accommodate the Ram Hammer, but I doubt, I seriously doubt that it can accommodate the Turtle Mace. What I do have is Power Sphere number 6, the Lion Laser. Uh, even though this comes with a handle, uh, it isn't able to fit in there, but uh, because of how it works on the, uh, uh, what's it called, the, the Thunder Megazord, it has a clip on it, which can fit on the hands. Now this guy does have, does indeed have a clip on either side. So what you can do is just attach that on there and it hangs rather limply. Uh, the other one it can hang on to is the bee spinner. Uh, this one actually is a little trickier. Like I said, I don't really care much for the hands on this guy, but basically what you do is you wedge, you wedge this kind of hammer shaped thing, you open up the hand, you stick it in there, and then you can stick the bee spinner in there. Um, so it'll just, you know, sit in there like that. But I'm not going to do it here because that would waste too much time. Uh, the other one I can hang on to is, uh, let's see, I think it's Power Sphere number 11, which is the Sting Blaster, which is used by the uh, Thunder Megazord. Thunder Megazord uses that one. Uh, again, you're using the clip on the back of the Sting Blaster, and you're just going to hook it right onto there, like that. Uh, that's really the only functionality you get on that one. The other one, the, th this next one is actually, this is actually the Japanese version of Power Sphere number 12 because they didn't, they didn't release number 12 in the United States. So what you're seeing here is a, um, you can see this is, this is actually a Car Curry Ball number 12. This is uh, the Catch Spider uh, with the handle on it. So what you're getting here, you're actually getting a, a, a Japanese version only. The handle here can fit on, actually it fits better. Um, I'm messing around with this here. Like I said, if it was easier to access the hands, this would be no problem. You know what, I'm not even going to mess with that. That's just going to have to sit there and hope it doesn't fall off in the middle of this review. And then you can take, let's see, where is it? I'll take number 10 and stick, I'm not going to show you how the, well actually I am showing you how this works. I'm going to try and cover the, the Kara Curry Ball series later, uh, for those of you who are wondering. And then just stick it on the thumb, oops, just stick it on the thumb like that and it'll just sit there and hang on. Now those are the only uh, power spheres that I own. That, it, that come with the series, or that, that come, that, that can attach to uh, the Samurai Star Lightning Megazord. The one thing about the Samurai Star Lightning Megazord, or at least the deluxe version, or even the one on the series, is that it's too small, it's too skinny to be accommodating um, power spheres. The power spheres are just too big. Uh, you can see right here, number 15 here. And so, in the series, uh, particularly, uh, the Samurai Star Megazord will kind of make things, make the power spheres will just kind of appear out of thin air right in front of it. Now, of course, the toy version, because you can't put the arms up, you can't really recreate that pose. So the best that I've been able to come up with 
is that you just kind of, you just have to kind of goof up, play around with this. You get the hands together as close as you can, and then you stick a power sphere, kind of wedge it in there, like so. That's like that's the closest you're going to be able to get with uh, with the armor, you know, fully set up like this. You can't. You you could do it with the armor off, but then why would you want to? Okay, in wrap up here, um, the, set, the the deluxe summary star Megazord, unlike the DX, how do you say, Hisu Henki Tenkujin, which is the Japanese version of this guy, uh, the Tenkujin originally came with Power Sphere number ten. Uh, car curry ball number 10, the, the spin bee, but uh, the US version does not come with the spin bee. You actually have to get that with the, I think, a special edition version of the, the Deluxe Storm Lightning Megazord, ironically. Bandai's marketing strategy. So what you get instead, which, uh, I don't know, this is actually kind of a nice, nice touch for me, because I wasn't a big fan of all of the power spheres. I could actually get them at a different different way. But what, what you get instead is Power Spheres 15, 16, and 17. Just with this set. With the Thunder Megazord you got Power Spheres 7 and 8 so that you could make the combined uh, Thunderstorm Megazord. In this case you get uh, 15, 16, and 17 so that you can uh, make up the uh, what's this called? The Ninja Firebird. Uh, this set you actually have to get in Japan separately. But here you get it um, yeah, okay, yeah, here you get it uh, included with the Samurai Star Megazord. Um, final highlights. Um, this guy is good uh, for what you get. Uh, it's nice that you get uh, the, uh, the Ninja Firebird, so you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about, you know, hunting around for that set. Um, although, you know, that was part of the, kind of part of the collecting gimmick. Uh, the Samurai Star Megazord, it's good for what it's worth. Uh, it, it, alone, you can see, this, this. a lot was asked of this guy. I'm not going to be covering it in this review, uh, even on CDX, but this guy, there, Bandai in Japan and in America asked a lot of this guy. He had to be able to transform into two modes by himself, and then he also had to combine with different sets, which, that is you know, quite a bit to ask. It's 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 very multi-purpose oriented. It's very specifically designed to be able to accommodate a whole bunch of different sets. So, you know, in in that regard, it really pays off. It it, it looks cool. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. The negative, the only really negative things would be how difficult it is to operate those hands and the locking mechanism or the the rotor motor function inside of the. Um, inside of the torso there. The hands also would have been nice if you could you know, get your fingers in there or whatever it is. But otherwise this, uh, I think this set turns out pretty well. And so once again, this is the Deluxe Samurai Star Lightning Megazord from the 2003 TV series Power Rangers Ninja Storm. I don't remember how much this guy sold for. I bought him at a KB Toys when it was on sale. I suspect this guy might have been something like uh, 25 or 30 bucks or something like that, but you you get a pretty good deal. This guy, believe it or not, the reason I have this guy, not only because I got the Ninja Firebird, but I got this guy because he looks he looks and functions exactly the same way as the Tenkujin. The only difference I've been able to find is this connection joint here isn't painted. In the Japanese version, it's painted silver. This whole nub right here, whatever it is. This connection joint is painted silver. That's the only difference I can find. Uh, other than that, it's perfectly identical. So that means I am very satisfied with uh, getting this guy over the Tenkujin. I'm not going to pay 50, 60 bucks or whatever it is to import a Tenkujin over from Japan when this guy is so close. So that's a really uh, helpful thing for me. And I believe that's it. So this is the Deluxe Summer Star Lightning Megazord from Power Rangers Ninja Storm, and this is Ava Unit 4A for CollectionDX.com, signing off.